I usually try to stay at least constructive if not wholly positive on the channel, and anyone who's been watching for a while knows if there's one thing I love, it's a good RPG sourcebook. These tend to be the things that help tie together individual stories in a cohesive way, and give the context which on one hand allows people to better develop their own stories for personal tabletop campaigns, but on the other gives the context behind the events, ship designs, and stats, and more that just warms my nerd heart, along with the more general source books like The Essential Guide to Warfare. One of the best things about them are the depictions of ship classes that are often otherwise just throwaway mentions, which is why we have some eras like the Vong War and post-Vong War, where there's so few of the ships that ever received designs, since they never got an RPG sourcebook. Today though, we're going to talk about a sourcebook that really dropped the ball on that front, despite having a lot of great informational content in it, and gave itself a reputation as being a bit of a joke in the Star Wars continuity, Kraken's Threat Dossier. It's unreasonable to expect Star Wars to ever be 100% consistent, but usually things are at least pretty good at being internally consistent, so the same source is not going to contradict itself that much. And Kraken's Threat Dossier was pretty bad even at that. It's a source book with three sections, covering the events of Courtship of Princess Leia, the Black Fleet Crisis, and the Corellian Trilogy, which was meant to be one of the first things to attempt to depict pretty prominent parts of the universe, like a good bit of the Hapen showing up there being fleshed out there, and the New Republic's new class fleet modernization project. The problem is, the ship drawings were incredibly rough. Most older source books lean more in the sketch direction, which is fine, but the designs introduced in Kraken depictions end up contradicting not just the books they were based on, but the text in the threat dossier itself and often each other. The new class ships tend to be the ones where there were no previous depictions, which includes such famous ships as the Nebula and Endurance, along with less prominent ships like the Belarus, Sashin, Hajin, and Corona. A few of these ships were later pictured again in other sources like the Essential Guide to Vehicles and Vessels, and most notably, the Fractal Sponge designs for the Endurance and Nebula, made for the Essential Guide to Warfare, which I'll be putting on screen right now. As you can see, these are very different from the original Kraken's Threat Dossier designs, and most of the ships which are intended to be based on the same hull, even according to Kraken's Threat Dossier itself, look nothing alike. For example, the Endurance and Nebula, they're a bit closer than others, but Hegin and Sachin, and some other examples. One of the last videos I did here, on the LAF and HLAF, are another example of a later source overwriting the Kraken Threat Dossier designs, although to Kraken Threat Dossier's credit, the HLAF and LAF depictions in Kraken Threat Dossier do look like they were based on each other. It pretty much gets to the point where, even though there are some ships that would have been really cool to learn about or to have in other places, they tend to get ignored by later sources and are only ever pictured in Kraken's Threat Dossier. A sourcebook about the new class modernization project and even some later Imperial designs would have been a great way to set up that new era of Star Wars. But instead we got things like, well, the ads, and this design for the Sashin. Now, it's not entirely correct that these classes, and even the Kraken Threat Dossier depictions of them are entirely ignored. They do show up in a few places, most notably the Invasion comics, including the Nebula's Kraken Threat Dossier depiction, where it's talked about as the Defender class, which was an alternate name for the same class, the Republic class Star Destroyer, and some others that show up in the comics. I did mention that the plot-related content was usually not bad, but even there, there's a few things that stick out as contradicting the original sources the book was based on. In a lot of places, I'm perfectly happy to give a pretty large amount of latitude when books need to do, or different sources need to do things for their own purposes to just sort of make sense within themselves. So if a book series, or a TV series, or an RPG source book, or a game need to, for example, in the later cases there, change the stats of something, change a few details so that it makes sense within the story it's trying to tell, then that's fine, but there's some stuff in Kraken's Threat Dossier that it just makes no sense that they'd change, especially since it's supposed to be a source book based on a few specific books, and it changes details from those specific books. For example, in Kraken's Threat Dossier, Hod and Leia's wedding was officiated by Ogwin Joe on Dathomir. In the book on which it's based, The Courtship of Princess Leia, Mon Mothma officiates the wedding on Coruscant, and that's an actual part of the book. It's not the biggest issue, it's just kind of weird seeing it uh, get that kind of thing wrong, or I, I don't I don't really understand what they were trying to change there, or what the purpose of the change was. So it's just a, a little weird thing in a pile of kind of weird things. Again, I'm not trying to get overly negative in videos, this was just something that started to come up more and more 
based on where I am in researching some things for Dethron's Revenge and some other videos. And it's been a bit annoying since we started the mod, so I thought it'd make for an interesting discussion topic for here. It does get a bit into the larger question of whether canon exists to tell stories or the stories exist to serve the canon and to what extent people expect each of those things, but which is certainly something that comes up a fair amount in these videos, and I want to talk a bit more directly about it in the future. Either way, I hope you've enjoyed this look at Kraken's Threat Dossier. If so, consider leaving a like or subscribing for more. You can also leave suggestions for future videos in the comments. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you next time.